Hello and welcome to the, to the 21 Days Face Your Fears online challenge. I'm Bristana Mantu, transformation facilitator, energy therapist and writer. And my mission is helping people heal their past so as to be able to live the life of their bliss. I'm super excited to be your host on your journey of personal growth and empowerment through fearlessness and the power of community. Today I have a special guest. His name is Mike Mindel. Hi, Mike. Hi. Mike Mindel calls himself an iHippie as he loves technology, entertainment and plant medicine. He's a true innovator, the founder and owner of multiple digital companies including Word Tracker and Web Venture. He's an avid filmmaker and has a particular love for plant medicine. On the one hand, he owns a company called Nature's Own Essence and on the other hand, he has a passion for the ceremonial type of medicine which helps dissolve emotional and spiritual blockages, opening a human to new possibilities. He has since brought many of his insights from plant medicine back into his work and home life. Thank you for joining us, Mike. How are you today? I'm doing very well, thank you, Christina. <laughs> okay, so in your experience with this mind-expanding ceremonial type of plant, what insights have you brought in relation to facing our fears? That's a really good question. Okay, so I've, um, I've, I've done these ceremonies probably about 16 times now in the past four years. Uh, I was introduced uh, to them after going to Burning Man uh, about four years ago. Um, I'd heard about them through friends and someone says you must come along and check this out. So I did and it was, uh, it, was a <laughs> it was quite something. It was quite a beautiful experience when I first experienced it. Uh, and I wasn't quite surprised for the level of insight and the level of the sheer insight that the plants can actually provide you. Mm. Um, I thought it would just be like um, you know, smoking a joint or something like that, just like a, a high experience. But actually what, what happened for me was I really communed and connected with the plant consciousness and it brought me several, well, more than several, many different insights over the course of four years and over the course of 16 ceremonies. Okay. And the one I particularly wanted to talk about today, which I know is an issue for a lot of people, is all about procrastination. Oh, okay. So it's good to focus, I think, uh, for this short period of time on just one key um, insight, which I can go into in some detail because yeah. I've got some real experience at it. Awesome, and let's do that. Procrastination is definitely the one. Okay. So, what about it? How can we overcome this fear of procrastination and not getting things right in the right time and the right order? Yeah, I'll tell you about it in a second. <laughs> no procrastination. Um, basically, yeah, where to start with procrastination? I find that the number one thing that prevents people from doing stuff. Let's say, let's say you want to get healthy, right? And uh, you think, okay, I want to get healthy. What are the, what are the steps towards getting healthy? Um, but you don't really do that. You just write on your to-do list at the very top. You just say, get healthy. It's like a huge, really big task. And you haven't really broken it down. You've just written this, this massive task and you haven't really engaged in it in any way. And, it's, and it's, there's no research done into it. It's just be, get healthy. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, because of the size of that task, which is quite big, it can seem insurmountable. So you actually do it. And doing things like Facebook and email and all that kind of stuff just seems like a much better use of your time at that moment. It's so easy to say, "All right, I'm going to I'm going to get healthy tomorrow, and today I'm just going to do Facebook and email." <laughs> you never get round to it. So I find the number one thing that stops people um, from doing the next task is that they don't know really the size of the goal that they want to do, what the end result is, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you, could, you can put, you know, get healthy down, but I think it's much better to say lose six pounds in the next six weeks. You know, be very, very specific about the kind of um, task that you're really wanting to achieve. It doesn't have to be too big and you don't want it to be too small. You know, taking out the rubbish is a little bit too small for, let's say not a task but a goal, right? It's a little bit too small for a goal. But if you say lose six pounds in six weeks, that's a lovely sized goal and it's specific. And that's the first step. The second is to actually break it down into a series of steps. So, for instance, the top step could be 
go to Amazon and buy a Nutribullet. The second step might be to go to the supermarket and purchase, you know, um, spinach, kale, and all the ingredients. But as you write down all these steps, you've just got to make sure they're all really, really specific small steps, mm. right? And the really important thing is to take one of those steps, right, and put it at the top. So you need to prioritize. You need to look through them and say, all right, well, that one is more important than that one, and that is more important than that one, and that's more important than that one. But the most important one that's going to get me going right now is go to Amazon and order a Nutribullet. And because it's very, very specific, and it's very, very small, and it's sitting at the top of your to-do list, you're much more likely to spend five minutes going to Amazon and buying your Nutribullet than anything else. Because you've made it small and concrete and actionable. Yes. So now you have an actionable result, which is lose six pounds in six weeks, and you have, say, ten tasks, and your very top task is that small, concrete goal. And now when you look at it, let's say, the following morning, you just go, well, it's just, it's just going to take me five minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Amazon, I'm going to order it, and then I'm going to do my email. You know? right. At least you know, At least you know that you can do it straight away. And without that, it's very easy to just not do things. Yeah. Uh, this reminded me of this motto, SMART, with S standing for uh, specific, um, measurable, a attainable, uh, uh, yes. R, yeah. something Results. result yeah. oriented, and yeah. T from time bound as well. Time bound, that's right, SMART. Yeah, yeah I've heard of that actually. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a useful model when we're setting ourselves up for goals. Mm -hmm. To, Type. Yeah, to put a deadline and to make it into sizable chunks to, to deal with. Otherwise, we get lost in the immensity of a task. And that's yeah. why we keep procrastinating and putting things off for a later date because we don't really know what's the next step to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I've got something else to add to this, actually. I'm just, um, I'm just looking over at my notes. Um, this, um, someone told me about it a couple of days ago. Uh, and it's actually something that comes out of the corporate world. Uh, I haven't got a name for it. I think it's, I think it's the formula for change. But I really liked it, so I'm just going to share it with you as well. Sure. And it says that basically uh, the formula for change, when, when something really changes, is when you have a dissatisfaction with the status quo, multiplied by a compelling vision of the future, multiplied by the first next steps. <laughs> multiplied by believability, right? And that's got to be greater than the resistance to change. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example, right? So let's say we're on the edge of like, uh, I don't know, we're on a platform and there's a burning forest behind us, right? And we turn around and we see the flames coming towards us, yeah? And we're at the edge of this platform and there's nowhere for us to move. So our dissatisfaction with the status quo is pretty high. Because if we don't move or we don't do something, we're going to die because the flames are going to catch up with us and yeah. we're going to burn alive, right? <laughs> That's pretty high on dissatisfaction with the status quo. Mm. Now, the compelling vision of the future. We might look around and say, oh, I didn't see this, but in front of me, there's a rope coming towards me, right? It's coming towards me. And I think if I can grab hold of that rope, I think there's another one ahead of it and another one. And if I grab onto each of them at the right time, I'm going to be able to jump across this chasm, which I've just made up, this chasm right in front of us, and get to the other side. Mm. So that's the vision of the future. Now the next steps, the, the, the believable next steps are, um, you've got to catch that first rope, right? So do you actually, you've got to think about, look, this rope's coming towards you. I've got to get hold of that rope. It's coming, it's in the middle of its arc, and it's coming across, and I'm just going to, there it is, I'm going to reach it, I'm going to grab it. That's what my first step is, right? And then finally, you have believability. So you put the whole thing together, and you go, um, okay, the, the fire's about to burn me. There are the three ropes. The first one's coming towards me. If I leap from the platform at this moment, I probably will catch that rope. You know what? Put the whole thing together is greater than the resistance to change, which is staying where you are, and that's what forces you into motion. Yeah, absolutely. I love this model, and it could work really well with overcoming our fears as well. We see that there's this uh, dissatisfaction. I see that I have this fear, I really want to overcome it, and yeah. then you, what was the next step? 
Yeah, so dissatisfaction with the status yes. quo, compelling vision of the future. You have a compelling vision of yourself, yeah. seeing yourself growing beyond your yeah. limitations and grabbing towards it. And then when you get yeah. out of your comfort zone, you see how much you've grown and how much you've achieved, which was even unbelievable or unimaginable before. Yeah. And then you've got the next step, which is, well, I'll do this. You know, or I'll do this interview, or I'll reach out to this person. But they're small, concrete steps, small steps. And then when they're small enough, and the result and the goal is sizable enough, but believable enough, then the whole thing seems believable. Mm -hmm. So if you put together everything I said at the very beginning about the concrete, sizable goals, that, along with the concrete next steps, that's what gives the believability. Mm -hmm. you put the whole thing together, and you can't help but move forwards. You can't help but transform. You can't help but change yes. into the thing. It's a, it's a transformational movement. Yes, know? yes, yes. I totally resonate with that. I'm all about transformation and uh, stepping outside of the confining boundaries of our uh, identities, of our self-constructs, and yeah. which are so much related to our fears, our smallness, our doubts and insecurities and limitations. But when we step outside of that and we, we see how much joy and abundance there is to experience when we're stepping outside of our comfort zone, it's just so beautiful and expansive. And it's so easy to stay in your comfort zone because you are getting a certain reward usually if you're comfortable. You know, if you're in your comfort zone, you're comfortable for a reason, and that's the amount of you're expending into it, and the rewards and the results you're getting from it are balancing. It, it, it's fine. You know, sometimes there's no reason to change, but sometimes when that fire is coming towards you, and you really do need to change. You know, it can be quite scary, and that's when the vision comes in. It's like there's no point staying where you are unless, oh, excuse me. There's no point moving forward unless you have a vision of what the next step is. Yeah, exactly. And that's where the motivation comes in. As you said, yeah. sometimes there might, be, there might be no reason to change. When you have this uh, strong, provocative vision that you're aiming towards, you're mm -hmm. going to connect with this fire within you that will burn and that will push you forwards. Well, there's a fire outside of you, and there's a fire inside of you, and it's pushing you forwards to the next thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, and how do yeah. you relate overcoming our fears and fearlessness with personal growth? Um, you have to ask me the question again. Sorry, again. How do we relate fearlessness with personal growth and feeling empowered in our true power and potential and capability? How do we re relate fearlessness? Yes. Hmm, that's a really good question. Well, when you, when you don't have fear, you can clearly move forward to the next step, right? And fearlessness is, is the opposite of that. It's, it's, it's like courageousness, isn't it? You know? yes. So if you have a lot of fear in you, it's very hard to move forward. You, know, you feel stifled by the fear. Um, when you transform that into courage, and I think courage really comes from that, that vision. You know? mm. If you really feel you can, you can actually get onto that rope, you're going to take that courageous step, aren't you? Yes. And that, that fearlessness, that courageousness, comes from that, that, that perception of where to go next. Yeah? yeah, you can't really do that from a fear place. Yes. You know, if you're in a fear place, you're, you're constantly worrying about limited resources, aren't you? Mm. You know, you're looking around and there's, there's not so much of this, there's not so much money, there's not so much, you know, and, you're, and everything's shrinking, isn't it? It's shrinking around you. And from that place, it's very, very hard to, 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 have, uh, to, to move forwards because you're, you're in fear and you're restricted. So you need to literally put that aside and or or meet the fear, meet it and feel it and and not try and change it because you can never really change the fear, but you can meet it where it's at, you know, f not try and change it, but feel it. And as it goes away and you let the vision come in, that's where I feel the, the courageousness and the fearlessness mm -hmm. comes in. You know, that's the meeting point, I think. Mm -hmm. it's never, it never really works when you try and do things out of fear. You know? Because you just go, ah, I don't know how to move. I want to do that, but I can't get anywhere near it. You know, yeah. it needs to, it needs to, needs to come from a, a transformational place inside you. And that, I think that step, whether through meditation, I actually use Headspace, uh, the Headspace uh, app. I think it's on, it's on the iPhone. I think it's on other, on desktop as well. But Headspace helps me get into a very present moment where I can feel my fear, but not have it um, consume me. 
Yes. You know, I can, I can say I feel it, but you're not consuming me. And now I can take the next step because I've got the headspace to have the fear inside mm. be able to move forwards. Yes. Otherwise, the fear just grabs you and it, and, it, and, it, and it just constricts you. And you can't do anything from that point. Yeah, Does you that, overly that, identify with it. And yeah, so you overly identify with it. Yeah, you're so attached to it. Yeah, and when you do things like Headspace, it allows you to become unattached from, from your fear. Mm, yeah. Okay. So meditation yeah. and Headspace is a platform for um, yeah. meditative music? What is that? No, it's not really meditative music. It's, uh, it's a, a guy with a really nice voice taking you through about 10 sessions of 15 minutes each. And you put it on every morning and you listen to these 15-minute sessions and he guides you guides you in um, uh, in a meditation and at the end of it you're it's, it's mindfulness meditation mm -hmm. essentially and at the beginning you think well what am I going to get from this it's just an iPhone app but by the end of 10 sessions and I think I'm on session 26 now uh, you really start to feel more space mm -hmm. and from that space of more space you feel you know the fear is is a it's just a tool and a, a, it's not you you know yes. It's just a, it's just a thing that is there that doesn't you don't have to be identified with it, and it gives you the space to find your courage and take that next step. I think oh. it's great to just take time out of the day, you know, with an app like that. Yeah. I do. I try and do it first thing in the morning. I did it just before I came on this call, actually. Absolutely! Wow, amazing. Uh, I know you recommended this to me, and I'll definitely start using it. And I think it's a great resource for everybody watching this interview to to try it out and see how it works for them. To create right. this head space, this mm -hmm. mental space and clarity within ourselves, to yeah. to be able to have a detached perspective from the things that we overly identify with, and just be able to take control in a different way. Yeah, it will help anyone overcome any fear. I think actually, because being able to dis disattach is that a word? Be able to de unattach. <laughs> detach. <laughs> detach. Thank you. That's the word. To be able to detach yourself from your fear through a process like this is, is, is such a great step, you know. And the more you do it, the more unattached you become, you know. And that doesn't mean don't care about, you know, I care about a lot of things. But it means that I, I don't get identified with things, especially things that just come out of nowhere that can easily rock the boat. I find I can easily remain unattached from those things. Even though I feel them going through my body, you know, there's stuff going through my body right now, and I can, I can feel that stuff going through, but I can still operate, I can still speak, because I've done the headspace exercise. Mm, I see. What I really appreciate you about you is that you're very creative, but bring so much of this creativity of yours into um, def definite results, mm. and um, you're doing lots of staff projects, and uh, you've released uh, the Burning Man uh, movie as well, Oh, that's right. Yeah. Shall I talk very briefly yes, about that? Yes, please tell us about that. Sure. So I'm a filmmaker as well. Um, I produced a feature film a couple of years ago called Don't Let Him In, which is like a psychological thriller. So I quite enjoy making those kind of movies. But very recently, I went to Burning Man um, a couple of years ago. And oh, are you still there? You've, you've, uh, you've frozen. Oh, you're back. Okay. Yes. Um, a couple of years ago, I, I, uh, I made a movie uh, at Burning Man called Burning Man Release. And if you want to go check that out, you can go watch that after this video um, on iHippy.me. That's I H I P P Y. I -P iHippie, um, dot me, dot me, and you can watch it for free right there. It's 15 minutes long, and it will make you want to go to Burning Man. Uh, I loved your video thank when you. I watched it. Okay, thank you very much for this inspiring talk, and I really love the fact that you're bringing this uh, higher understanding and you're channeling it in a very structured framework that it's, it's, apl it's applicable in our daily lives, so thank you mm -hmm. very much for that. No problem. And thank you everybody for watching this interview. I hope you were inspired and that you uh, enjoyed it and that you will be able to share it on your social media with your friends and let them know that you're participating in this online challenge for Fearless Warriors. Um, please join my YouTube channel called Journey to Bliss and sign up on the link below to get your free Bliss Blueprint with the three stages of radical transformation from within. I hope you enjoyed this interview and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um,